So the first time I saw this dresser, I walked right by it. I just didn't see potential. But the next day I was back at that same estate sale and everything was marked down. I have no self-control when it comes to vintage furniture, especially when it's marked down. Even though I had no ideas and no plan, it's never stopped me before. I bought it, loaded it up in my truck and took it home. I posted a video of it to my Instagram and one of my followers reached out and she asked me if she could claim it. She knew exactly what she wanted me to do to this dress. And you know what? She was right on. I'm Amy. I build and revive furniture, often adding something new to something old. I'm sharing tips, tricks, and methods on how to give old pieces a new lease on life. Welcome to my shop. This piece didn't have a maker's mark on it anywhere, but I was curious. So I took a photo of the hardware and I used Google to do a reverse image lookup. And I found a matching piece listed on eBay. The overall construction style is exactly the same and the hardware is a dead match. The maker's mark on this piece says it's from Broyhill Premier's Modern Classic Collection, circa 1960s. Okay, I feel better now, let's get to work. The first thing I do when starting on a new piece is to clean out the drawers, vacuum out the insides, and remove the hardware. I noticed the middle left drawer wouldn't come out completely and after a bit more encouragement, I could see why but definitely not the most unusual things I've pulled out of a dresser. Yes, that's a gold tooth, root and all. Ew. The old finish was pretty shot, so I got to work getting it removed using my carbide scraper. You have to be really careful with this tool because it's really easy to gouge the wood. It was going pretty well, but I wanted to see if another method would be more efficient. So I pulled out my favorite chemical stripper and supplies. A cheap paintbrush, a scraper, a few different scrub brushes, a glass or metal bowl for the stripper, and a container to dump the old gunky finish. The stripper works differently depending on the type of finish, but in this case, it worked pretty quickly. After the old finish was completely removed, I wiped everything down with a rag and warm water to remove any residue from the stripper. But you don't wanna see any of that, it was gross. This sanding footage is way more satisfying. After the whole piece was sanded, I could see that the color of the legs didn't match the drawer fronts or the top. This is not unusual for a mid-century modern piece, and here's why. Often the legs, and sometimes the whole entire frame, are made out of solid wood, but the drawer fronts and the top are a veneer. The veneer is usually something premium, like walnut or teak, but often the frame and the legs are made from something less expensive, so the wood colors don't match when you take the old finish off. Sometimes I embrace the contrast, but for this piece, I want the color to be consistent. Because I'm dealing with a couple of different wood colors, I'm gonna use this oil-based gel stain in the color Antique Walnut. But wait, before we dive in here, we've gotta talk about stain and sanding swirls. I'm crouched in a dark corner of my shop with one of the drawers and a flashlight, and I'm looking for swirl marks. They're really hard to find, but trust me, after you apply a stain, they stick out like a sore thumb. Swirl marks are definitely caused by user error, and I am usually guilty of it. Sometimes I'm not holding the sander right, or I don't realize there's some buildup on my sanding pad. The best way to remove them is to take a sanding block and hand sand them out. And since we're talking about screw-ups, one of the things I should have done here is to wipe on some mineral spirits right before the gel stain. This isn't always necessary, but often it really helps the wood to accept the stain evenly. I don't have footage of it, but I ended up having to sand down the top and completely restain it. I was not happy about that at all. I waited 24 hours for the stain to dry, then I sprayed three coats of an oil-based top coat. Here I'm using General Finish's Armor Seal in satin. And you don't have to spray it, it's actually formulated to be a wipe-on coating. An oil-based stain is extremely durable and a good choice when you wanna bring out the warm tones of a wood piece. Okay, last step here. I used a tried and true method for cleaning the brass hardware. This is my favorite part. This is when I get to install the hardware, make any last minute touch-ups, and in general, just fuss over the piece before it leaves my shop. All right, friends, here's where we started. And here's how it looks now. What do you think?
Thanks for watching. I'll be posting more videos about how I revive vintage furniture and sometimes build new things too.